Well, hello and welcome to all my loyal YouTube subscribers. Let's have a look at what's going on in the markets. Well, we have seen a huge rally in the US dollar since April. Huge move, still respecting this upward um, channel that we're seeing right here. But we did see on Friday a decent pullback in the US dollar, down almost 1%. And if we have a look at what happened here, with the SPX, we can see that we had a big rally, right? We're up 2.3%. In fact, if we look at the entire market, right? We look at the five different indexes that make up the market, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Russell 2000, the transports and the industrials, all of those were up more than 2%. Now, when an index is up more than 1%, that's significant, but to see it up more than 2% is pretty impressive. Now, what caused this, Sean? What actually happened here? Well, let's have a look at this intraday. So we can see right on the open here, what happened was the Wall Street Journal reported um, that the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates by 0.75% in November and then pivot. Now, a lot of times the Federal Reserve uses the Wall Street Journal to get their information out there. So that's what happened there. And when they say pivot after the rate rise of 0.75% in November, pivot would mean pause further rate rises. It doesn't mean start reducing, it just means pausing. So the fact that they said that, and also then the Bank of Japan, pretty much at the same time, just before the market opened at 9.30 a.m. New York Eastern Time, they announced intervention in their own economy, right? They're looking to intervene, stop the bleeding. So what happened then is that the dollar started to fall in relation to the yen, and then the markets rallied, right? The markets liked the fact that the US dollar was weaker, gold went higher as well, and that's why we saw this huge move up coming down to this pivot and then just rallying for the rest of the day, right? So that's what happened there. And if you have a look back here at the US dollar, if it does break this lower trend line, and is no longer in this upward channel and does start to break below there, you will see the markets rally. Okay, so keeping a close eye on that. Um, we do have a new opening range. Why? Because it's the third Friday of the month that occurred on the 21st, right? Monthly options expiration. We know we set this opening range to determine whether the market is bullish or bearish. We do it twice a month. First trading day of the month and the third Friday, which we've just had on the 21st of October, right? The Friday just gone. So right now we've got an opening range of 3757. Anything above that is bullish and anything below 3647 is we're in bearish opening range mode and we'll set our trading accordingly, right? Now if it does break this upper line, this upper opening range of 3757, I believe it's likely to move to 3900, right? You can see that's there's a pivot there, here and here. It's a bit of a resistance level. I think that's more than likely where the markets will go. So very, very short term, uh, I would be looking for the markets to move higher and sort of a medium horizon perspective still lower, right? So that's what I'm looking for there, right? Now, uh, very much the same with the QQQ or the NASDAQ, um, looking for it to potentially get to that 290 level. Okay, so we'll see, we'll see. Right? We are in the middle of earnings season, a lot of companies reporting their earnings and we need to be mindful of that as well. If we look at the combined put call ratio, the 10 day moving average, right now it's at 0.98, so that is bullish. Okay, that is a bullish metric. Uh, the trend right now, the most accurate overbought, oversold reading on the market is 0.45. That's actually bearish. So normally what you would see is a flat to down market over the next one to three days, 90% of the time. So we may not see that big move up on Monday uh, or, or a move up on Monday because this trend is um, very overbought right now. You don't see it that extreme that often. So uh, 0.45, you'd probably see a flat to down market over the next one to three days. Um, according to that, the skew right now is at 116, the perceived risk of a two standard deviation move or more to the downside, in other words, a market crash, smart money's not worried right now. It's at 116, anything below 115 is bullish. So we're very close to being bullish there. Not the total put call ratio, but the SPX put call ratio of 1.35, it's below 1.75, so that is bearish right now. So some conflicting signals there. 
Um, and if we look at the market momentum right now, the amount of stocks above their 50 day moving average is at 32%. So still below that 50%, that's still bearish, but you can see we've improved dramatically. Last month, it was only 11% of stocks above their 50 day moving average. Um, then last week, 18, on Thursday, 23, and now 32. So we're heading in the right direction, um, but still technically bearish. Now, if we look at some of our other ways of looking at the markets, we can see looking at our stacked moving averages that the market uh, is still in the downtrend on the daily chart and on the weekly, we're still below the 89, so we are still in a downtrend there. Now, the risk appetite of the market, look at the bond market, junk bonds first, that's still in a downtrend, right? Are we seeing maybe an inverse head and shoulders here? I'm not sure. Um, Time will tell. Um, and also the high yield bonds, they're still in a downtrend. So goes Goldman Sachs, so goes the market. Have a look what happened with Goldman Sachs on Friday, up 4.6%. Broke above the 89 EMA here. So if we get another confirmation day close above, I want another confirmation close above that 89 level, that shows a change in direction, right? So we've gone from obviously a downtrend to now potentially reversing to a uptrend. So be keeping a close eye on that. If it does stay close above that on Monday, uh, that could be a reversal sign for the market. Uh, now, transports, which predict where the market's likely to go several weeks or months in advance, that's still in a downtrend. Nothing has really changed there. And the opening range, we have to wait and see what happens with that. So that's what's going on with the markets in a, in a uh, snapshot. We're going to be watching the US dollar, that upward trend, right? Remember that, watching this line. If it breaks that, markets will rally. And obviously, we're looking at the S&P 500 for that opening range, right? Anything above 3.757 is bullish. Below 3.647 is bearish, right? So they're the that's what we need to be looking at. Now, as far as potential money-making ideas, well, one trade that we were in uh, that we're looking to close out was AV. TR. Uh, this trade we entered on the 28th of the 8th and we entered this trade and we bought the option for 615. Now we didn't pay any more than 1% for time value. Time value of this option was only 20 cents. Now we're going to close the trade out. It's worth 1290. So we've made 110% return in two months. How good is that? With AVTR moving to the downside, right? Just an incredible trade. 110% return, we're going to take the profit on that one right now. You've got to be very careful when you buy an option. I don't want to buy too much time value, you want to be very conservative. You don't need the stock to have a big move for you to be in profit. That's important as well. The way you structure your trades is just as important as the trade itself, right? You've got to be able to structure it in such a way that the probabilities of success are in your favor, right? Less than 1% time value. It's a pretty smart way of doing it if you're going to be buying an option. Now, uh, for me, Tesla, I like the look of Tesla. Let's have a look at Tesla right now. They've just had earnings come out. Okay, they've just had earnings come out and I, it looks like a double bottom here, right? A W pattern, a double bottom here. I think it's likely to bounce off that 200. It's already had a bit of a bounce off the 200. I think it's gonna move higher from here. You can see it's a pretty significant, if I just drag that out a little bit on the daily, you can see that's a pretty significant level, that 200 round number support level. And I think we're probably likely to get a bounce higher from here. We've got some gaps to fill up here at around 260 odd. Uh, and I think they could have a move or a bounce from here. Now, one of the things that I do for my members is I do these complex, complex calculations which determine the real value of a stock. So when I went through all of the calculations for Tesla, um, took me quite some time to do this. What I actually came up with was a real value on Tesla of $386.74. So what does that mean? That means it's dramatically undervalued right now, right? It's so a very undervalued right now. So that's one thing compared to its real value and the real value and the price at some point will meet. Okay. So the fact that it's very much undervalued right now, real value 386, uh, price 214 uh, that's the first thing I like now the next thing I like is the fact that the EV market is set to grow by 390 percent in just six short years and when we have a look at Tesla itself we have a look at the earnings history you can see one two three four the last four quarters in fact the last seven quarters they have beat market expectation as far as their earnings go right their actual earnings were higher than what the analysts expected so I like that seven quarters of um, 
earnings beats is a pretty good deal. The percentage growth rate of the stock per annum is almost 53%. I look for something over 15. So that's pretty impressive growth rate, right? If you're growing your earnings, um, your, your price of your stock is going to go up, right? It's recently had a three for one stock split. It's very affordable right now for a lot more people. And I like the look of this. Now, if we have a look at the statistics here, we can see the return on equity is very good, almost 30%. Okay. This acts as a governor for the growth rate of the company. The company can't grow any more than the return on equity without taking on more debt. So that's really good, well-managed company. Good return for the owners of the company, almost 30%. Look at the quarterly revenue growth, 41.6%. Quarterly earnings growth, almost 98%. Fantastic, well above the 15% I look for. Total cash, almost 19 billion compared to the total debt of under 7 billion. So a huge amount of cash, why is that important? Well, you've got money available to service the debt if you run into hard times financially, and you've got money to invest in new projects. So I really like the look of that. Institutions like it, over 40% is held by institutions and people that work for the company love it as well, 16% of the shares are held by people that work for the company. So I like the look of that. I'll look for something over 5%. The financials, just very briefly looking at this, um, you can see that the total revenue here, look at the total revenue growth. That is phenomenal, phenomenal revenue growth. Love that. Now, if we look at the free cash flow, money left over after paying for all your obligations, look at the dramatic change here. That is incredible. So I really like the look of uh, Tesla right now, I think it's undervalued. It's a fundamentally sound company. It's just got its earnings out the way now. And I think as a long-term investment, uh, to me, it makes quite a bit of sense, right? So, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of things going on with Tesla and I think it's just starting, you know, it, it's only just started really, right? Um, huge amount of potential here. It's more than just a, a car company, but you know, even if you look at the advantage that it has being one of the first movers in the electric vehicle space, it's got an annual production capacity of 2 million units already. Now Ford, the huge company Ford, doesn't reach that level with um, annual production with electric vehicles until 2026. So uh, that's pretty impressive in and of itself. It has one of the highest growth uh, profit margins of any car maker. It came in at 27.9% in the recent third quarter of 2022, right, end of uh, September, 30th of September. For comparison, Ford's um, gross profit margin is 15.7%. It's a big, big difference there. So that is some pretty interesting stats there. Very, very good for Tesla. Now, the self-driving software technology, uh, by some estimates, that the market could be worth uh, 2.1 trillion by 2030. So I like the prospects of Tesla long term. I really do. So one of the things that you could do is you could look to agree to buy it at the price you choose. Not what the market chooses, but you choose the price. And you get paid day one. How is that possible, Sean? How can you choose the price you want to buy a stock and how do you get paid for choosing to buy it, right? Uh, well, let me show you. What you do is you do a cash secured put option. So I'm not just going to go out and buy the stock. I'm going to sell the 200 strike put option where that support level was that I showed you for $8.32 for the 18th of November, right? Just 26 days from now. That will generate me a 4% return and a break even if I do have to buy the stock at 191.68. That's my cost basis. Okay, I'm very happy to own the stock right now, but I'll just get paid and get it at a cheaper price. Okay, now one of two things is going to happen by the 18th of November. Either it's going to be above 200 or below 200. Nothing else can happen. So if it is above 200, you keep the $832 of income for selling the put option at the 200 strike. Uh, you keep that and you don't have to buy the stock. End of transaction. If it is below 200, you still keep the $832 in income, but you now do what you said you were going to do. Buy the stock at 200 with a cost basis of 191.68. Remember, I want to buy the stock anyway. I'm just getting paid before I do it, and I'm choosing the price at which I'm, I want to buy it for, right? So I think that's a pretty good deal. Now, gold, here's another little trade that you might want to look at. We've got a couple of different ones going, but I'll just show you one more. Um, 
gold right now. Look at that. That's a classic double bottom there. That is just beautiful, right? So this is likely to move higher here, uh, probably back up to around 160 is going to be my target. So I like the look of that double bottom there. If the US dollar continues to fall or at least show some weakness, uh, that could help gold as well. So uh, I like the look of that, right? I'm looking for gold to move up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a spread, right? Now I'm I've got the target of 160. I'm looking for this to get to 158 or above 158. So being a bit more conservative. The expiry, 18th of November. So I'm going to sell the 158 by the 156, only $71 per contract, increasing it by say two or three cent increments, and I wouldn't pay any more than 90 cents, right? So at 71 cents for this spread, this call debit spread, I could potentially make $129 on a $71 outlay, right, for just one contract. So that's 182% return on risk. Our break even is 156.71, so just a bit above where it is now. Set your stop at 31 and your profit taker at $1.51, right? So 71 goes out to buy the spread. If its stock drops or GLD drops, uh, then your stop is triggered at 31 comes back in. 71 went out, 31 comes back in, you lost $40. 71 goes out, your profit taker is hit. Why? Because GLD goes up. 151 comes back in. 71 went out. You've made $80 a contract, right? So two to one risk to reward, asymmetrical risk in your favor. So that's how that would be set up. And that's another potential idea. We do have a couple of other ones as well, but they're just some ideas for you. I hope you found that useful. Hope you got something out of that analysis and content. Thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube. If you've got any ideas or if you've got any feedback or if you're enjoying what we're doing, send an email to support at cashflowoptions.com.au. Uh, just address it to Sean. Uh, I really appreciate it and thank you very much for listening. All the best and bye for now.